you know, one out of eight in Vietnam were in combat. So a lot of people go, like, you're a Vietnam veteran, you must have had all this trauma in there. I think the trauma I had uh, was realizing that some of my friends uh, that I trained with did get killed, uh, realizing that I had to contact people who had trauma in their families as the job I had to be an assistant to a general. Um, and so they, they gave me a PTSD. Uh, and in my 20s, um, I was really wild. I, I think I just challenged life almost. When you do think about the trauma in that it's it's not um so different as far as like the historical trauma that people have um, trauma that people deal with in an indigenous community at times right we deal with trauma a lot in our families and our communities and so um and art's always around us and i think art is always going to be therapeutic and so whether you dealt with a lot of trauma or very little trauma i think still the creative process of making um, and, and suspending your mind and imagination and creating something new is just helpful for your spirit and your soul. And it's a, and it's a great way to uh, communicate as well, right? So you're, that's just helpful. It's just a helpful way to kind of process things. I've been deployed twice, got hit by an IED both times. I got um, a TBI, PTSD. One morning I woke up randomly with this overwhelming urge and need to paint. And it turned out it was pretty cool. And I was relatively decent at it, but the important thing about it was that I, I was, when I paint or when I create anything, I go through every emotion just naturally. I, I start out optimistic and hopeful, but then I'll get angry, um, sometimes even rageful or sad and frustrated. But I'll never stop even though I want to destroy it at one point, I don't stop until I can look at it and feel a sense of peace. If I can look at it, regardless of whether I like it or not, it's, irre it's re irrelevant. But if I look at it and I could feel a sense of calm and, and peace, then that's when it's done. On the first day of the workshop, we took the class through the museum. It was important uh, to take them through. First of all, it's good to just get them familiar with you know, new techniques, colors, textures, and uh, there's a real continuity that they find through it, through it all. You know, like they've seen their own people doing this work, and that work comes from an important place. Today, they're still, like in the communities, veterans are the leaders, you know. I was kind of nervous at first, um, struggling with PTSD. I kind of like hate crowds and I don't like going places. Um, as far as getting the, the V gouges into these little tiny spaces and it had to really be steady with your, your hands and your fingers. Um, but this one has a lot more concentration and you have to think about, is this gonna fit? Or how can I do this to make everything fit? You know, it's kind of, it's challenging, but it's, it's fun. I, th I thought it was fun. I got here and it was like a total different feel than what I had expected it to be. Like everybody's laid back, everybody's chill, and everybody's just kind of, they're interested in you. The hardest part of this workshop was trying to figure out what you're gonna draw and what you're gonna make, for me at least. And I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do, um, but I went and reverted back to doing uh, par flesh designs. It turned out to be a butterfly. If it's gonna be printed black and white, the negative spaces will be white. And so it'll resemble a white butterfly, which has a lot of uh, special meaning to my wife and I. So the piece I'm making is um, a, one, a photograph that I've taken. I took out at uh, Bosque del Apache in New Mexico of some at early morning, the birds are sitting out on some of the uh, sticks in the water. And um, so tried to create a sense of water and the birds just kind of out there um, all alone because that's they were they were just kind of sitting on these little tiny branches and it was just amazing to me to see these little birds hanging on this little tiny branch and it's nice to sit with people who understand your stories right there or who have lived a, a, or had a shared experience of being in the military and and understanding you know just kind of the camaraderie that happened there because you don't necessarily feel that with a lot of people. There's, there's a, it's a different culture. 
Um, and just to be with people that I've never met before who all have some shared experience. It's kind of nice to just sit and talk and joke and, you know, just kind of banter back and forth. It, it, it was. It's like coming, you know, to a, you know, a, a family event that you hadn't seen family in a really long time and just sitting down and talking and just, yeah. There is this hesitation to come into an unknown place, maybe from my military time. There's kind of this, I, I want to hold back and kind of watch and observe things, see how things are before I, I like to test, you know, test the waters a little bit. Um, but being in this class with this group, I, I feel like I'm among my fellow peers, um, you know, not just because we're Native American, but also because of our backgrounds, you know, and I feel comfortable. And so because of that, I feel looser. Um, and I think that definitely helped to open, you know, the very first day. I mean, it's a short time that we're here together, but right away already there's this connection. Um, so I think that really kind of helped me to push even the block print idea, because I think I would have played it safer before. I'm like, oh, I have to present myself a certain way. There's kind of like this, I don't know, hierarchy in my mind. I have to present myself a certain way. But then when I'm with, you know, other fellow uh, service members and then other natives, I feel like oh, it's family, it's easier. Um, so I let go of a lot of those guards. Um, so yeah, it's, it's an excellent opportunity. Yeah, it was during the, the 70s. Um, it was 72 to, oh no, 75 to 79. And of course the Vietnam War was just over around about that time. So this was when the Cold War was going on. I was kind of brought up here and there. I, was, I didn't really, you can't say I really had a home, but parents there for me, like, you know, I was just kind of, I, I can't find the word for it, but uh, uh, basically homeless. I just went from family to family, mostly relatives, you know, my grandma, my aunt, my sister, you know, that kind of thing. And then, like I say, I was just kind of wandering aimlessly since I didn't have parents to really guide me. So I was just kind of like doing my own thing. So I decided just to sign up, you know. It, back then it was, I think it was voluntary. So I said, well, heck, I'm, I want to travel, so. <laughs> Plus the, the education, I was, the, well, that's what I really was kind of after, the education, you know, the funding. And that's the reason I joined, and I did my time and my service, and I, yeah, I kind of wanted to stay in, but I wanted to get out of combat arms and go into something a little safer. <laughs> and I wanted to get into map making, you know, topography. They said, probably, you probably won't get in there until, like, three, four years. So I said, okay, I don't, I don't want to wait around for that. So I'm gone. So that's what happened. <laughs> it's vitally important to invite them in and uh, present and produce workshops for veterans, art workshops. Um, because of the healing aspect that art provides. It almost acts as like a prayer, you know, it's very healing. It's very cathartic. People can just like get into the moment, they call it, like a flow, where time stands still and you just lose yourself. You come out on the other side, it's been four hours and you have a beautiful drawing and, you know, and so it's getting people centered and focused. And that's what it takes, that's what healing takes a lot of time to sublimate, you know, our positions, like we're so distraught and I'm upset. And how do I take that energy and, and, and put it into a good space? And the art allows you to do that. Art allows you to build, you know, from, the, from those uh, traumatic situations. To me, I think art saved my ass in a way. And I'm still not totally tame, but I think that it really allowed me to give myself that self-love and self-respect and really kind of uh, build on the things that are good. And so there's no easy answers in, in life, I, I realize, but there certainly can be joy. I really believe that 
art does two things. One, it allows you, if you're just a viewer, to accept the spirituality of something. Somehow we respond to it, if you allow yourself. The other thing that it does, if you're making art, it allows you to express yourself in a way that no, nothing else can.